I obviously follow the success of SpaceX because that's our future, Jarrett Jones, Blue Origin Senior Vice President, declared at the Satellite Business Week workshop on September 10th. After more than two decades of lagging development at Blue Origin, they've closely followed and fiercely competed with SpaceX, but success has often eluded them. And can someone like Jeff Bezos accept that? Of course not. He'll certainly do much more to catch up with SpaceX. Blue Origin's prepared for an acceleration plant, producing hundreds of BE-4 rocket engines to beat out SpaceX. Stay tuned as we get into this and lots more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The space race is only a race by name. In actuality, there's SpaceX and everyone else. Only the company founded by Elon nearly two decades ago has sent an orbital rocket booster into space and landed it safely again. Only SpaceX has landed a rocket the size of a 15-story building on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean. Only SpaceX has carried both NASA astronauts and private citizens to the ISS. And only SpaceX is launching prototypes of the largest and most powerful rocket ever made, a behemoth called Starship that's destined to carry humans to Mars. And it's no surprise that SpaceX has consistently set the industry standard, serving as the target for other rocket companies to surpass. Amidst all the rising efforts to challenge SpaceX's dominance, one can't overlook Blue Origin, a competitor that's always endeavored to closely track each stage of SpaceX's development. However, the history of this rivalry has not been particularly favorable for Blue Origin. Despite being established two years prior to SpaceX and over two decades of development, Blue Origin has yet to successfully place any of its spacecraft into orbit to this day. Truly regrettable that their costly and time-consuming projects have yet to achieve many successes and instead have been plagued by numerous setbacks they intentionally try and conceal. In fact, thanks to abundant resources and government backing, Blue Origin has continued to operate effectively to this day. They've consistently conducted research and rocket production to directly compete with SpaceX. To aim for exclusivity like SpaceX, Blue Origin also aims to manufacture its rocket engines independently. They even aspire to venture into the engine business for the launch market. The BE-4 is a large engine, producing 5 and 50,000 pounds of thrust, and is designed to be highly throttleable, which is necessary for soft landing of recoverable boosters. The engine burns liquefied natural gas instead of traditional rocket-grade kerosene, a choice made for clean burning characteristics at low throttle settings, but also to harness the boiler of LNG and propellant tanks to enable pressurization without external helium systems. Like the SpaceX Raptor, the BE-4 is a stage combustion design, meaning a small portion of fuel and oxidizer are diverted to a pre-burner where combustion gases are used to power the engine turboprops. Pre-burner fuel ratios are typically oxygen or fuel rich, and the combustion gases are poured into the main engine combustion chamber, creating a closed cycle. Closed cycle systems are more efficient than older designs, which dumped combustion gases overboard or used independent power systems to drive the pumps. Like most engine designs, rocket engines are a series of design compromises and the use of oxidizer or fuel-rich mixtures, as opposed to perfectly stoichiometric ratios, are used to control temperatures and allow the use of combustion chamber nozzle materials that can be cooled regeneratively with propellants. Currently, Blue Origin's making every effort to produce more BE-4 engines capable of flight than ever before. Blue Origin's energy production capacity is primarily concentrated in two strategic locations. Washington and Alabama. The company's presence in Huntsville, Alabama encompasses a rocket manufacturing facility within the Cummings Research Park. While both facilities significantly contribute to Blue Origin's engine production operations, the Huntsville sites emerged as an unexpected star. The factory expanded to 400,000 square feet in 2020 and has recently gone an additional expansion of 200,000 square feet, which is nearing completion. In the future, the company intends to essentially duplicate its 400,000-square-foot building as revealed by Shane Davis, the city's director of urban and economic development. With this scale, it's expected that a substantial number of BE-4 and BE-3U engines will be manufactured here, positioning Blue Origin to compete with SpaceX's Raptor engines. They've begun to increase production, especially since October last year, when the company announced that dozens of these engines are currently in production to meet the growing demand for civil, commercial, and defense launches. Over the three years since the factory's opening, it's managed to produce more engines than originally anticipated. Recently, Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, an important partner of Blue Origin, shared images from the factory, clearly showing the production of the Vulcan Cert 2 engine. 
Notably, during an interview, Tory mentioned that the first few sets of engines were supposed to come from Kent and Washington, but the CERT II engines now being manufactured in Huntsville. Tory's response indicated a significant shift. Yes, things have changed. In other words, the Huntsville facility, primarily designed for engine production, is performing even better than initially envisioned. As of the current moment, not a single BE-4 engine's taken flight, but they're being mass-produced at the factory. This is because, assuming schedule stays somewhat on track for Vulcan and New Glenn, once these vehicles start flying, they're expected to do so with high frequency. The ULA Vulcan rocket, chosen by Amazon for its ambitious Project Kuiper, is a significant driver of the BE-4 engine demand. Under the Project Kuiper contract, Amazon plans to launch satellites by 2026, aiming to provide global internet coverage, which necessitates a substantial number of engines. Each Vulcan launch requires two BE-4 engines due to the expendable nature of the rocket, potentially resulting in the production of up to 76 BE-4 engines solely for Project Kuiper. While the Vulcan uses two BE-4 engines, each new Glenn rocket requires a total of seven engines. The first stage of the new Glenn is designed for 25 flights and demands a total of 175 BE-4 engines. This necessitates Blue Origin to produce and test dozens of engines annually to support both rockets. Jared Jones of Blue Origin stated during a Satellite Business Week workshop on September 10th that he's hopeful for multiple new Glenn launches next year. They prepared four boosters in various stages of production, with other tests going as well. However, the technical delays and instability associated with the BE-4 engine have consistently raised concerns about the timelines of these crucial missions. In fact, the BE-4 engine has undergone a development process that's fallen short of expectations. In the past, there were some issues with the BE-4 engine's progress and delivery to ULA. In August 2020, Tori Bruno announced that the second BE-4 test would be delivered soon, followed by the first flight qualified one. He also noted an ongoing issue with the BE-4 engine's turbo pumps at that time. Blue Origin was still addressing the matter concerning 75,000 horsepower pumps responsible for delivering fuel to the BE-4's main combustion chamber. Subsequently, according to Bruno's disclosures, Blue Origin addressed these issues and enabled the engine to enter production by the end of 2020. In early 23, we also witnessed the successful performance of the BE-4, excelling in a static fire test for the Vulcan. However, the good times were short-lived, as on June 30th, 2023, the BE-4 engine exploded just 10 seconds into testing, resulting in damage to the test stand. This particular engine was intended for use in the second Vulcan flight. Since the incident, the company hasn't provided much information, with most updates coming from Tori Bruno. Bruno clarified that every engine component, including electrical boxes and composite overwrap pressure vessel, undergoes an acceptance test as they come off the production line to verify their workmanship. The one-time qualification process ensures that the BE-4 engines meet the design criteria. He mentioned that BE-4s on Certificate 1 had passed an acceptance test, or ATP, as had many others. This engine that failed ATP suggests that the issue was indeed caused by poor workmanship and shouldn't affect engines that have already passed these tests and been installed on Vulcans. These kind of failures were relatively common at the beginning of a production run, but became rare as the automated shutdown systems became finely tuned. Overall, we can recognize the efforts and dedication put forth by Blue Origin, but there are still numerous technical and even company internal challenges to address. With several upcoming schedules, can Blue Origin ensure its responsibility for the successful execution of each engine product? Share your opinions in the comments below. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.